All right, so we're, we're here today uh, looking at an Oshkosh striker. Uh, this is a six by six Oshkosh striker. We do make the product in three models. So we have a four by four, a six by six, and an eight by eight. And uh, each of the different variants carries a different amount of uh, agent um, based on what uh, different requirements from the FAA through different airports. This specific truck going to uh, Concord, North Carolina has, a, has 3,000 gallons of water. In addition to water, the trucks also carry foam on board, um, in addition to dry chemical powder. Um, so this specific truck also has um, about 300 gallons worth of foam in addition to 500 pounds of dry chemical. So in addition to the agent that it carries on board, it also has to support different types of ground operations. So over here on the left side of the vehicle, we have a, a pump compartment. Um, and these two compartments, here you would have crosslay quick attack hoses where the firefighters, once they come into a scene, would be able to pull the hose out um, and, and respond uh, inside the aircraft. In addition, you see uh, this hose reel right here. Um, this is what's called a dual agent hose reel. So as you look, uh, as I mentioned with the dry chemical powder, uh, this hose reel actually can shoot water and dry chemical all at once to try to propel that dry chemical even further. This is where the pump is held. Uh, so this specific vehicle has a 2,000 gallon per minute water pump um, that's made by a pump manufacturer called Waterus. Um, and this truck, uh, again, that pump is designed to meet all of the required flow rates um, by the FAA in order for these airports to maintain index. In addition to uh, the, the main pump, uh, there's some pump controls that the operators can use to operate the pump from outside of the vehicle. There's also a suction inlet where the, the, the operator, the firefighters can uh, draft water from a pond to refill the truck if they need to. These vehicles, you can see they have very large tires. Um, actually, uh, the axles are patented Oshkosh TAC-4, so it's a fully independent suspension. And uh, you can kind of see that these vehicles in general have a very aggressive kind of off-road capability relative to a municipal fire truck. And that's largely because you don't know exactly where aircraft are uh, gonna, gonna have an incident or a crash. So they're able to um, operate off-road around the different trains that might be, um, might be at a specific airport. And again, you see the large tires, the off-road suspension, and kind of those aggressive departure and approach angles on the vehicle. Coming to the back, this is our walk-in engine compartment. Um, so in here, you can step up into the compartment and uh, this, this specific truck has a, uh, a V8 16 liter Scania engine that uh, powers the, the whole truck. And that includes both driving the vehicle as well as uh, pumping. And one unique thing about uh, the striker is that it needs to actually pump and roll at the same time. So sometimes uh, part of the daily operations um, of a our firefighters, you need to approach the airplane if it's on fire and be able to pump and drive around it as the conditions change at the incident. You know, this, this truck is really designed around the, the, the driver and the operators. Um, what's a little bit different about a municipal fire truck is they typically go look for a fire hydrant. It's a little bit more of a slow setup. Um, in ARF, it's quick. Basically, they have three minutes to get to the end of the runway and two minutes to discharge all their agent. Um, so really that operator is going through one of the most stressful moments of their entire life. And we've, we've innovated and developed over the last de many, many decades to make that as seamless and easy for the operator. There's a cockpit, they have all their controls right around them, um, again, to, 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 to be able to operate the vehicle as easily as possible. So this is the uh, um, kind of the cockpit of the striker, if you will. A couple of things you'll notice is that the driver actually sits in the center of the vehicle, which is different than you would have in a, in a normal truck or car. And we, we position the driver in the center to give them a lot of visibility. Obviously, these, air, these trucks are designed for the airport, not for over the road. So the more visibility they can have at the scene, the better. You know, if you look at all the controls, there seems to be a lot of controls here, but really this can be designed for like multiple operators or even one operator to, to use you have kind of your dr traditional driving controls here. And as you work, work yourself to the right, you have joysticks and other switches, including the, the water pump switch and foam switch to operate the firefighting systems from in the cab. This specific truck has a bumper turret, a low attack bumper turret. So this specific turret does a couple things. One, it can discharge water and foam. 
It also can dis discharge dry chemical powder through that. It also is a low attack, so it can be brought down further to the ground to um, give uh, the operator more versatility in how they can attack a fire um, on an aircraft. The cab is designed for up to five people. Typical, typically, most customers have three to four seats in it. Um, you know, and kind of configure to each specific customer's requirements. Um, you know, obviously we kind of have an officer seat to the right, a primary driver, and then um, seats on the left. You also notice that uh, many of the seats come with SCBA brackets in them, where they'll actually be, uh, be able to get into their SCBA um, breathing apparatus as they, they're going to the fire. Um, the ARF response in general is all, is all about speed and quickness. Um, as part of uh, really the whole ARF strategy is designed around five minutes. So you have three minutes to get to the end of the runway, and then you have two minutes to discharge all of your uh, agent. And that's really des um, all designed around um, the, basically the melting temperature of aluminum with, with jet fuel. So again, this industry is all about waiting, 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 but you always have to be ready for that, that incident should it ever occur. We've shipped thousands of ARF trucks over the years, over 5,000. Um, and they, they're in over 100 countries, right? So, um, I mean, anywhere from, from China to Southeast Asia to Latin America um, to the North Slope of Alaska to Europe, I mean, you name it. If there's an airport, um, they probably have a striker, and we're really proud to support, um, support those individuals who are keeping people safe at those airports. Whether it's a large hub airport or a small regional airport, no matter where that is, they have to have the same level of response because as a passenger, you would expect to be safe no matter where you land or take off. So we do have uh, customers in the middle of the Pacific and other small islands where both they're attracting their own tourism, but also uh, they're maybe having aircraft over flying over them where if there's an emergency, they would need to land at this airport. So again, places like uh, Midway Island, the Mariana Islands, uh, American Samoa all have our products there. And um, we try our best every day to try to keep those products supported. Basically our electric version of the Striker is called the Striker Volterra. And the Striker Volterra has patented Oshkosh technology and really combines both a diesel engine and batteries um, to, 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 to meet the need of this specific um, uh, use case for electrification. Um, the Striker uh, Volterra can ha has um, approximately 40 miles of range, so it can do all its daily operations um, on fully electric as it's driving around um, around the air, airfield. It then can also has an, uh, an emergency response mode where the engine kicks on and combines the power of both the batteries and the engine to actually offer greater performance than the conventional vehicle. And uh, we've been fortunate enough to have some early adopters. Um, so we've, we have a um, quite a few customers who have vehicles in order and we're in the process of delivering them right now. And we're excited to see that transition from these airports into a, a greener, um, more uh, environmentally friendly product for them. The Striker Volterra can actually, based on your, your duty cycle, can save about 75% of fuel consumption um, for, that, for that specific vehicle, which again helps these airports as they're trying to lower their own carbon footprint um, be part of that whole process. EAA, um, uh, the Oshkosh Fire Department and the airport, uh, Whitman Airport, they actually have a striker there every single day um, that helps protect the GA aircraft um, that would normally fly in and out of there the other 51 weeks of the year. Um, for this one week, we're really proud to actually, we actually lend them a truck so they have a little bit extra capability. Um, you know, I have a really good relationship with the airport and the city fire department to try to um, obviously support their needs as the as the community of Oshkosh change, changes pretty drastically. You know, Oshkosh Corporation um, was founded in Oshkosh uh, in 1917. So we've been a, a key employer and, and partner within the community for that time. And we've seen Air Venture grow through that. And it's, uh, it's really a privilege to be a part of it um, when the aviation industry kind of comes to Oshkosh for, for one week out of the year. Um, on top of that, um, obviously uh, Whitman is a phenomenal airport. Um, and the other 51 weeks of the year, we have a really good relationship where these trucks actually get tested on the aircraft where Air Venture typically is for the one week. Um, obviously, they don't allow us there this one week but uh, during Air Venture, but uh, we're able to use those facilities to make sure that the products we provide to, to airports um, can act and be tested on a, on a, on a, live, a live airport.